Hi folks, I'm Brad Perkins. Uh, this summer I'm going to do a, a few short sessions on bird identification here in Ohio. And, um, you know, by day my job is the executive director of the Ohio Forestry Association, but on evenings and weekends I've got a lot of other hobbies. A couple of those include birding or being a, a good bird enthusiast. Um, and the other is as a, an amateur nature photographer. Um, so today I'm going to be sharing some of my pictures and stuff with you to help with identification of, of different birds. Now I said I'm an amateur nature photographer. Uh, say that for a couple reasons. One, I've not sold any of my uh, product yet, any of my pictures or anything. Although some of them have been used for other presentations and um, have been published in some publications and a few have been auctioned off for charity. So uh, they're not all bad. I also say I'm an amateur nature photographer because um, I use small point and shoot super zoom cameras to, to, to do my photography with. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't use the big cameras like the professionals have with the, you know, the lenses this big around and that long. Uh, but I think you'll still be pleased with what you see today. So today we're going to uh, talk about warblers. The warblers are the very small birds, just a few inches long, you know, two to five inches long, uh, that we seldom see unless we're watching them during the migration. The spring migration is usually the easiest to see them because there's not a lot of leaves and stuff on the trees. Um, but a lot of people also like to watch them in the fall migration. Without binoculars, um, you just very seldom see these birds unless you happen to be in an area where uh, a few of them are hanging out in the low branches. Uh, good, good places for this, especially in the spring migration in May, is um, up on the, the shores of Lake Erie here in northern Ohio, where, where little warblers uh, flying up from, from their winter homes will uh, stop a, along the shores, especially in some of the marshes and stuff there on the the western basin of Lake Erie and uh, rest up and feed up before making that flight across Lake Erie and on, where they go on up into uh, you know Michigan and Canada and up into the arboreal forests and stuff. So you know, that's the best time to see them um, and we're gonna we're gonna look at a lot of those today. You know with, with small birds like this because they often hang out in the high treetops it can be really hard to to see them if you don't know they're there. Um, so bird calls are an important part of, of bird identification. I'm not going to spend any time today on bird calls with uh, with the warblers because I have so many of them here I want to go over in a short period. Um, but I would highly recommend, uh, you know, getting on the web, uh, Googling some of the, the, the bird call programs, or like myself, on my cell phone, um, I have a, a birding app on my cell phone which has all the bird calls on it. So these are very helpful because oftentimes I'll be out hiking, be out in the woods, be in one of the marshes, something, I'll hear a bird, and I'll know what it is, and that gives me the opportunity then to look for it and, and try to find it. So I highly recommend that. So we think about warblers, uh, there's usually 36 warblers that um, come into Ohio or pass through Ohio during migration. Um, there's a few others on top of that. Um, the Kirtland's warbler is one of those, well, which I have some pictures of. It's a relatively rare warbler. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but there's a couple other rare ones that pass through. So 36 is the normal count. 20 some of which actually breed here in Ohio. Um, and most of those birds, uh, most of our warblers migrate anywhere in this, you know, in the fall to the southern United States, all the way into Central America and clear into South America. So, so these little tiny birds are flying a long way to get here and uh, do their nesting here in the northern part of the United States and Canada and up, up into the Arctic. So um, I'll tell you that, you know, of those 36 warblers, species that come through Ohio. I have decent pictures of all but, but two of those. I do not have the Wormany Warbler, although I've seen it. I haven't gotten a good picture. Um, I also have not yet seen a Connecticut Warbler. Missed a couple opportunities earlier this spring to see that. We have a Warbler that you will see a picture of, a Morning Warbler, which looks very similar to that. So uh, we're about to start looking at some of the pictures and talk about some of the identification of these. Other thing I'll tell you is, um, the male and the female, there can be a lot of differences. In a lot of our birds, there's not. You know, if you look at blue jays, crows, eagles, whatever, they all they all look the same. Males and females look the same. Um, but in a lot of the smaller birds, the males are very brightly colored, very easy to identify. Um, they're the ones that are very flashy to try to attract the, the females. Whereas the females are usually very dull, very, I don't wanna say colorless, but they blend in almost like their camouflage to blend into their surroundings. So when they're on their nest, it's harder for predators to find them. So identifying the warblers by the female warblers by sight can be really difficult. Um, but I, you know, so I don't have a lot of pictures of the females, but I do have a few. 
that I'll show you today so you can see that, you know, the difference in some of the males and females. So with that being said, let's uh, let's start looking at some of the, the warblers here. Um, right, right here off the bat here, you see we're got, calling this Birding with Brad, uh, the warblers in Ohio. And I'm going to be doing, you know, other sessions here later this summer on, on other, you know, birds here in Ohio. So one of the things about warblers is, as you see in a lot of little pictures around the outside of this, is yellow is one of the uh, predominant colors um, in warblers. So I'm going to start off and looking at the yellow warblers, either with yellow in the name or yellow in the, the actual color of the warbler itself. So the first one is going to actually be the yellow warbler. So that's a very small warbler. Um, this is a, a picture of a male here. And in, during the spring migration, especially when you get up around Lake Erie, um, you will see this is one of the most common warblers in Ohio, the yellow warbler. They really like to hang around uh, the marshes and some of the other shrubby areas here in Ohio. Um, the males identified by being all yellow and then the bright um, auburn streaks um, down its chest and breast area there. I'll take a look at the female. And the female is, again, all yellow. Um, but it doesn't have any of those streaks on its chest. So oftentimes you'll see them hanging together and that's always an easy way to, to tell that. Now, you know, oftentimes you have to go out looking for these birds and stuff, but not always. The next one I'm gonna show you is the yellow-throated warbler. And I've got some better pictures of these, but I wanted to show you that sometimes you don't have to go looking for them. Sometimes they come to you. So we have a yellow warbler, or a, excuse me, a yellow-throated warbler that actually has been living on our property for the last five years. And he, you know, comes to our feeder if he gets here a little bit early in the spring before the, the bugs and worms and stuff are out in the trees. So we've got a couple of pictures of the yellow-throated warbler here, actually on our bird feeders at home. Beautiful little bird, kind of a blue, bluish gray on the back, black stripes, and that bright, bright yellow throat. Our largest warbler is the yellow-breasted chat. And the yellow-breasted chat is a very secretive warbler. Hard to, hard to find this guy sometimes. Um, he's got a lot of really distinctive calls. Um, this is, again, this is our largest warbler. Um, still isn't very big, still hard to find. And I think I've read just recently where it was actually, um, you know, most of our warblers are considered wood warblers. And I think this guy was actually given his own uh, category now. Um, here's another better picture. You can see that bright yellow chest, the white on the, the belly and then uh, the black and white around the eyes and a much bigger beak than you'll see on most of the rest of the warblers. Um, where I find this guy the most is hanging around some of the, the brushy scrubby areas. Um, so there's a few warblers, this being one of them that really like some of the wildlife areas here in Ohio um, that were initially reclaimed back into grasslands if they were you know, strip mine properties. Um, and now they've got a lot of, of low shrubs and brush and stuff on it. And that's where we'll find a lot of the yellow breasted chats. Continuing with the yellow, uh, this is a yellow rumped warbler. Now you can see in this picture that the yellow on its rump is a little harder to see um, in this picture, but it also has yellow on the shoulders and yellow on the top of the head. Take a look at another one here, and you can see the shoulder patches and the, the yellow on top of the head first. There's actually two subspecies of the yellow rumped warbler, one called the myrtle, which is this one, and one called the audubons. And the easiest distinguishing difference on it is the Audubons will have yellow around the throat instead of the white. Um, I have yet to, to see and photograph an, an Audubons, but the, the yellow rump warbler is one of our most common warblers during the, both the spring and the fall migration. And uh, you're very common and a little bit larger than some of the other warblers. So continuing with the color yellow, it's no longer in the name, but this is the prothonotary warbler. The prothonotary warbler, one of our most beautiful warblers, um, you can see it's a, a lot of bright yellow, almost an orangish yellow. This one's got a little bit of red on its head right now, probably in uh, mating season. Uh, they've got kind of a, a blue-gray wing. And these little guys love to, to hang out around, you know, kind of swampy, watery, wet areas. They use dead trees. They use woodpecker holes for their nesting. So uh, if you find some dead trees in a marsh, or a swamp with uh, woodpecker holes in it down fairly low, uh, your prothonotary warbler has a good chance of uh, nesting there. So here's another picture. You can see how bright yellow, and again, sometimes it's almost an orangey yellow that these prothonotary warblers are. Now, a bird that looks very similar to the prothonotary warbler, but one major distinguishing difference is the blue-winged warbler. So if you notice here on the blue-winged warbler, um, up by its eye, 
it has a black stripe through the eye right out to the bill. I'll go back to the prothonotary warbler. You see that, that that black line is missing from the eye to the bill. So that's one of the most easy ways to distinguish this. Plus, on the blue-gray wings, it's got some white wing bars. And again, the, the, the blue wing warbler likes to live in the, the scrubby, brushy stuff. Um, and he has one of the more distinctive calls. So this is one that if you learn to learn what the call is on the, the blue wing warbler, and here he is eating a little worm, um, you will often hear them and be able to look for them then before you ever will actually see them. Still continuing with that yellow color, it's definitely a predominant color in the, in the warblers. Here we have the hooded warbler, uh, known for that black, black hood and bib all the way around its head and face. Now this is a woodland warbler. I mean, he likes to live in the deep woods. Occasionally you'll see him in some younger forest, but he likes, to, he likes the deep woods. Um, and oftentimes you will hear this one before you'll ever see it. And you'll have to do a lot of looking to, to find him. And the next picture I wanna show you here is uh, another hooded warbler, but, but this, is, this is typical for, for us, at least us amateur photographers and probably for some professionals is, it seems like when you're trying to catch pictures of little birds, there's always one leaf, one twig, you know, one blade of grass in the way. Um, I would love to have been able to just clip off that one twig and this would have been a, a really good picture. So it shows you a little bit of the kind of greenish color on the back of the hooded warbler here um, and, and the good contrast with the yellow and the black on the face. Another one with a lot of yellow and some black on the face is the Kentucky warbler. And the Kentucky warbler is again one of our larger warblers, but when I'm saying large, we're only talking three or four inches. You know, we're not, we're not talking big. Um, this guy really is one of those uh, hard to find warblers. Uh, they, they love the underbrush around logs and rocks and, and brushy material. Um, but they do nest here in Ohio, um, close to where I live. Uh, there's some areas where I can, I can find these guys if I really look for them. And uh, another shot here, again, very distinctive with that almost all yellow body, kind of a greenish on the back and the black around the face. Again, we've still got yellow as the predominant color here. This is the Canada warbler, one of our you know, lesser seen warblers here in Ohio. But uh, this, is the, this is the Canada warbler and the male Canada warbler stands out because of that necklace or chain, you know, kind of around its, around its throat area. Otherwise it's yellow with kind of a, a, a dark gray back. And here's another picture of the Canada warbler. And again, you can, you can see the, the necklace on this one quite well. Still looking at yellow here, we have the Wilson's warbler. And again, this is a secretive little warbler. Um, in, in all the years I've been doing this, I've only actually seen probably five Wilson's warblers that have been fortunate to get some decent pictures of them. Uh, the thing that stands out on them is that yellow body and just that little, little black beanie type cap. Got another picture here. Uh, looks, looks like somebody's done his hairdo up really, really well, but a uh, pretty little bird. And also in this picture, if you look around the eye, you can see kind of a, a distinctive dark eye ring with little white specks on it, um, which stands out if you get a close enough shot of the, of the Wilson's warbler. Again, mostly yellow, a little bit of greenish on the back, and that, that high, high brow black cap on top. More yellow, so the prairie warbler. Now the prairie warbler, you know, at first glance looks a little bit like the Kentucky warbler, but uh, habitat is very different. This is a much smaller warbler even than the in the Kentucky, you see the white wing bars on its wings. Um, this one likes, again, it's called a prairie warbler. It likes the, the more open areas. Uh, so I find this one, again, a lot in some of the wildlife areas in Ohio that will reclaim strip mine ground uh, where they like to, to live in the shrubby area. And again, this one has a very distinct call. So if you ever learn the song of this one and you hear it, um, you won't mistake it for, for another warbler. Here's another shot um, of a prairie warbler. We're getting into a little bit of other colors. This one's still kind of a yellow, but almost orange. This is the Cape May Warbler. Um, and this one stands out for the black streaking on that yellow, that yellow orange, but also for that red cheek patch. Uh, it's the only one I know of that has that kind of red cheek patch. So here's another picture, uh, very distinct from the front there with the, the black markings and the, the black top and the, that, that red cheek patch. So this is the, the Cape May Warbler. Another one with the yellow is the Magnolia Warbler. Very pretty warbler. It's got that black and gray uh, head and back and wings, black streaking on the front and mostly yellow. 
Uh, I think I have a second picture here of the magnolia, a little more close up. So again, you can see that there's uh, there's definitely a, a lot of yellow in, in in our warbler population. Another one is the pine warbler. Um, now again, this is one that loves to stay high in the high in the trees. Oftentimes, uh, you know, they're feeding in the pine trees, uh, but it's a mostly um, yellow bird with greenish back. Doesn't have a lot of distinctive markings. So this one um, maybe is easily identified because of its lack of markings, uh, but sometimes it can almost it can almost be confused with some of the, the females of some of the species that don't have um, a lot of markings either. This is the pine warbler. And the palm warbler, uh, again, a little bit of yellow. It's got kind of a, a rusty red patch on the top of the head and a couple of distinguishing characteristics about the palm warbler. One is it's one of the few warblers that actually pumps its tail up and down. So if you're seeing this guy sitting on a branch, walking on the ground, and by the way, this is one of the ones that does feed on the ground more than others. So you will see them hopping around on a roadway, um, along a trail, um, but, but we're in more in kind of open and brushy areas. Uh, but they have a very distinctive uh, characteristic of pumping their tail up and down. And so this is the palm warbler. And when these guys come through, they come through in flocks. You see, you usually see lots of them. Another one here with a lot of yellow is the Nashville warbler. Uh, he's he's fairly easy to identify because of the, the light gray head. Now this one you can see uh, also has a little bit of red up on the on the top there again when these guys are in breeding mode some of them get a little bit of a reddish on the on the top cap um, but this bird is almost all yellow very small warbler with with a, a kind of a gray head um, doesn't have gray on the front like right underneath the bill and stuff but the rest of the, the, the head cap is is a light gray and this one is the morning warbler, and I'm sorry I don't have a look at the face of it. I have only seen two morning warblers in all the time I've been doing this. Was fortunate to get a picture of this one. Uh, did not get a picture of the second one I saw. Um, very secretive warbler. Not a lot of them that we see. They love to hang out really low near ground level, in the brush, under logs. Um, just they pop up every once in a while to get some food, and you'll see them then. Otherwise, uh, they're very secretive but they're really known for the kind of dark yellowish green body and a very dark um, black, it's, a, it's gray, but almost black head. And this one looks very similar to the Connecticut Warbler. Uh, I do not have a picture of the Connecticut Warbler, but they're very similar with some differences in how the head color and around the eyes is. So this is one of the pretty ones, the Northern Perula, well, they're all pretty, but uh, I was, this has always been one of my favorites, the Northern Perula. Um, has different colored blotches all over its body. It's got the white belly. It's got the, the red and yellow on the chest, a little yellow under the throat. And this other picture here will show you it's even got some yellow green on its back. So uh, very pretty. So between the between the blue, the white, the yellow, the greenish, uh, these are very, very pretty, pretty little warbler. One, one of my favorites. Now we're going to get to some of the warblers that, that yellow is not necessarily the uh, the most dominant color. So this is the American Red Start. And I'm going to show you a male and a female on this one. Uh, the American Red Start is almost all black, a little bit of white on the belly with the, those bright orange splashes on the shoulders and wing bars. But the female is one of our prettiest female warblers, I think. Um, this is a female American Red Start, uh, distinguished by the, the, the shades of, of brown and gray and yellow, very soft, almost pastel. So this is one of our prettier and easier to identify uh, fem you know, female warblers, the American Red Start. Here's another one that's uh, really got a lot of mar different color markings on them, the, the chestnut sided warbler. Off obviously it's got the chestnut coloring on the side of that white, white belly and chest. Also has a, a yellow head cap and some, some black around the white face. I think I might have, a, yeah, there's a second picture of the chestnut sided warbler. Um, you can see here that chestnut streak down the side and the other colors on it. Uh, very, very pretty, pretty little warbler. This is, again, one of my favorites, the black-throated blue. And I, I'm going to show you a couple different pictures here that's interesting about birds that have blue color on them. Um, but this one is uh, black-throated, obviously. Uh, a lot of white on the belly, blue on the back. And you'll notice there's a, a little 
white spot on its wing. It's almost like a, a square or cube there on its wing. And that's a very good distinguishing mark. Um, that mark will be on the females and the young birds. So easy to tell the black to blue by that little, you know, that sometimes it looks almost like a little square uh, spot on its wing patch. But one of the things about birds with blue coloration, if there isn't sunlight going through those feathers, um, it doesn't refract out to a blue color, whether that's a, an indigo bunting um, or, the, or a black to blue warbler like this. So when they're in a shadow, it almost looks black. It almost it looks black or gray instead of blue. Again, you can see, you know, by this one, he was he had some sun on him, definitely looked blue. And this one here, it, it looks like, you know, it's, it's more black. But it's again on that wing patch, it's got that little little patch on its wing of white that makes him stand out. Here's one, it's a black and white warbler. Um, and that's all he's got is black and white. And one of the interesting things about the black and white warbler, I'll show you a couple of pictures here. It's one of the few birds that we see that will walk up and down a tree trunk upside down. Um, if any of you have ever seen any of the nuthatches, the white-breasted nuthatch or the red-breasted nuthatch, they will walk up and down, uh, you know, forwards, backwards, upside down, whatever on, on a tree trunk. And the black and white warbler also will do that, one of the few birds that does that. Very pretty, and uh, again, just a, a solid black and white. Now here we got one back to a little bit of yellow again. This is the Blackburnian warbler. Um, I was very fortunate to get some pictures of him down low. Normally these Blackburnian warblers are up very high in the trees, and all you see is that white underbelly and the bright orange uh, throat. You often don't see the rest of the, the coloration on the Blackburnian warbler. So here's a, another picture of it. <clears throat> one of our pretty little birds and you know he's obviously down kind of in the shadows under some some leafy shrubs um, if he's up on a high branch with the sun hitting him that that orange throat just stands out uh, tremendously very very bright now here's another one of the black throated warblers this is a black throated green warbler and it's called that obviously it has the black throat uh, but instead of like the black throated blue having a blue back this one has more of a green back so here's a here's another picture and you can see more of the green on the back. Uh, these are, again, a very small warbler, probably just three inches long, has a very distinctive call. So again, this is one of those, if you learn the call of the black throated green, you might hear them in the forest um, and then get a chance to, to actually look for them. Uh, but a very, very, very beautiful little bird, the black throated green warbler. Now here's one that, uh, that we don't see a whole lot of. Um, it's called the black pole, the black pole warbler. So kind of like the Wilson's had that black patch on its head, but it was all yellow. This one is um, white with some black streaks and a little bit of brownish on the, on the back. I think I have a second picture here. See a little bit of brownish green on the wings, but, it, but it's got that definite black, black cap, which is where it gets its name, the black pole warbler. Then here's another with some different coloration on it. This is the bay breasted warbler. So the bay-breasted warbler has a little bit of that coloration like the chestnut sided. But if you remember the picture we looked at, the chestnut sided it had a, a bright yellow head cap uh, where this one has the same color on the top of his head as it does on its uh, chest and breast there. So this is the bay-breasted warbler. Okay, now here's one that just, you know, hardly has any coloration markings on it at all. The Tennessee warbler, it's, it's almost an all grayish bird. Um, but it's a long, slender warbler. So oftentimes, um, my first glance at it, if I don't get a chance to see the, the green on the back or that it doesn't have an eye stripe, a real distinctive eye stripe, I'll, I'll think maybe it's a, a red-eyed vireo. Um, but when you get a good chance to look at the or the Tennessee warbler here, it's gray with that kind of greenish coloration on the back. And here's one that is, uh, again, I've only seen a couple of these, the orange crowned warbler. And in this picture, you can see a little bit of the orange crown, but it's very faint. But uh, this is a bird that doesn't have a lot of coloration and a lot of markings on it. It's just kind of an overall drab color with just a little bit of orange on the top. So when you're seeing one of these for the first time, you have to you know, see, see whether it's a, a female of one of the other species. Um, but usually I can you know, catch that little bit of an orange top on it we know that this is the orange crowned warbler. So now we're shifting gears there by the, by the way that traded to some of the more uh, rare birds from the warbler species that we see here in Ohio. Um, and I apologize for the quality of this picture. I think I told you up front I was an amateur, 
but this is the cerulean warbler. And a cerulean warbler was, is, is one of those threatened species as far as um, its, its population has been declining. Um, I think it's been doing a little better here in Ohio lately as our, as our forests get um, bigger and older, more mature, because that's the type of forest that uh, the, the cerulean warbler likes to, to live in. And if I had a little bit better picture on this, when you would see that it has a, a necklace, a very light necklace right around its neck, kind of a blue color. And again, this bird, um, when it's in the sun, the back and the top of the head and the wings are more blue than they are gray. In this picture, it looks a little gray, um, but this bird almost always is feeding at the top of the tree. So even when I know where there's several of them at, it can be very, very difficult, especially after things start to leaf out um, to get good pictures of this bird. But this is the cerulean warbler. And when you talk about conservation stuff, you'll hear a lot about the cerulean warbler because of its populations having declined. Another one along those lines um, is the Kirtland warbler. Now the Kirtland warbler is even more rare. Uh, the Kirtland warbler passes through Ohio. Um, we don't usually count it in the 36 species that are normally in Ohio because this one's, you know, the last several years has been seen once in a while. Um, and I have both a male and a female Kirtland warbler. The Kirtland warbler has also been on the decline. And the reason for that is it really breeds and nests in just one type of, of forest. It breeds in the jack pine stands up in northern Michigan. So there are folks up there that are doing what they can to, to preserve and increase, try to increase the, the, the number of acres of jack pine um, up, up, in, up in Michigan so that these little fellows have uh, more breeding territory. So um, this is the Kirtland warbler. You see the male has that yellow chest with a few little black markings and you see the, the white eye. It's, eye ring. It's not a full eye ring, kind of a broken eye ring. And here's here's a female, um, uh, just kind of similar to the male, but a, a lot lighter in color, both the front and the back, less of the black streaking. And the broken eye ring around, around her eye is also a little bit lighter white. So I've been very fortunate to see two or three uh, Kirtland warblers and to be able to get a few photographs of it because some people, you know, have never, never seen the Kirtland warbler. And another one in Ohio that uh, we love to find is the golden winged warbler. Uh, this is a female golden winged warbler and I got very fortunate one year and this little guy played around where we were at for quite a while. Um, I still do not have a photograph of a male golden winged warbler. I've only seen one, uh, did not get good photographs of it. Um, and it's just got, it's got more black and yellow on it, but uh, the golden winged warbler's population is on the decline um, throughout the eastern part of the United States. And, and that is mostly due to the fact that it likes to, to feed and nest in very young forest. So when we think about here in Ohio, only about 5% of our forests are what we would consider young forests. Um, we really should have probably 15 to 18% of our forests should be in young growth forests. Um, but with the with with all the fires we've been trying to put out, you know, for the last 70, 80 years, every time a fire starts, uh, we haven't been having fires that have decimated forests to start young forests. We don't do the same amount of clear cutting now as we as we used to do. Um, and we're not don't have as many old field sites generating back to young forests. So we don't have the habitat. That's one of the things that um, some of the groups in Ohio are trying to do is to is to develop more young forests uh, to help save the golden winged warbler. Shifting gears again, um, there's a few other warblers that uh, some people don't realize are warblers. Uh, one is the oven bird. And the oven bird is a ground nesting bird. They build a really neat little um, mud and leaf nest on the ground. It has almost like a tunnel to go in and out of it. Uh, distinguished here by uh, the, the white chest with really black dots on it and that bright yellow streak down the center of the top of its head. So this is the oven bird. And again, it has a very distinctive call. A couple others along those lines. Um, one here being the Louisiana water thrush. There are actually two water thrushes, the Louisiana and the northern water thrush. Uh, a couple differences. The, the Louisiana water thrush, as you see here, um, has a very white chest, white uh, eye stripes up around the head. Um, I'll show you a picture here of the, the northern water thrush. You see it's it's more, the eye streak up there is more, you know, yellowish, tannish. 
Uh, same with some of the chest area where the streaking is. The other difference between these two, and I'll go back to the Louisiana water thrush, the Louisiana water thrush likes to live around running water. So small streams, um, creeks, stuff like that, where it's actually moving water. Uh, the northern water thrush prefers uh, ponds and marshes and uh, non-moving water. But again, those are, those are three warblers that some people don't consider to be warblers, or at least they don't think about it. Switching gear to our last few here, and these are the really rare birds. And, I, and so again, I'll apologize for a couple of these pictures. They're not very good, uh, but this is a Townsend's warbler. Um, there's only been a couple of these ever seen in Ohio, or, um, or at least that the Ohio Ornithological Society has uh, um, recorded as, as being seen. Um, I have seen this bird one other time out west in uh, the Yosemite National Park. Uh, this one actually was up at uh, Maumee Bay here in Ohio um, last year in 2019. It's a very pretty little warbler, the Townsend's warbler. I'm going to throw this picture away and hope I get a better one. Uh, might do the same thing with uh, the Swainson's warbler. The Swainson's warbler is another one that um, usually nests, you know, south of us here um, in Ohio. We don't usually see this one in Ohio, um, but I'll tell you, it kind of, it's kind of to me looks like a cross between a um, a water thrush. It it almost sounds like a water thrush, but it has the the head and eye stripe characteristics almost of a worm-eating warbler, which I don't have a picture of, but this is the Swenson's warbler, and again, throw that picture away. I'm hoping to get a better one. We're going to finish up here with the uh, black-throated gray warbler, and the black-throated gray warbler is another one of those warblers from out in the western part of the United States that we just very seldom ever get here. Uh, this little guy happened to uh, come up into central Ohio a couple years ago, hung out for a few weeks. Uh, one of the interesting things about this little guy is you see those two little yellow dots they're actually above his, off, you know, above and off to the side of his eyes. But when you're looking at this bird from a distance, they look like the eyes. The eyes are so black and look just like the rest of his face that those little, little yellow patches look look like that's his eyes that you're looking at. So that's the black-throated gray warbler. So uh, closing off here, um, hope you enjoyed uh, looking at some of the pictures here of, of warblers in Ohio. Again, we have 36. Uh, that commonly migrate through Ohio um, in the spring and then back out again in the fall. And uh, there's a few others that, that do pass through. But again, beautiful little birds. If you get a chance to get out in the spring um, and, and get out to see these things with some binoculars and stuff, they're some of the most beautiful birds we have and most people never get to see them. So that's it for today. Uh, stay tuned uh, later this summer here. I'm going to come out uh, to hopefully weekly with some different sections here, uh, marsh birds, raptors, sparrows, rare visitors to Ohio. We'll probably do some waterfowl. Um, so hope you've enjoyed it and uh, look forward to, to seeing you again later. Thank you.